Okay, so we are in bab three. And from last class, I have uh, covered from the beginning up to uh, what are those documents, yeah? uh, the sleep bank, the sleep transaction, perbankan, electronic, the urus niaga atas talian, the online transaction, the sleep daftar tunai, the bill bayaran, folio pelanggan, memo, keratan check. Okay, so I've covered up to here. And if you have forgotten one of the documents, then you may refer back uh, to the previous uh, class, uh, the previous class recording. Cool. All right. So I'll uh, quickly continue to the voucher pembayaran, as you can see, is a star here. Okay, meaning this is quite uh, popular when they are giving the document. Okay, so what is a voucher pembayaran? A voucher pembayaran is a document dalaman untuk menunjukkan suatu pembayaran telah dibuat dan diperakui dan ditangi oleh penerima. So this voucher pembayaran is actually uh, normally something that uh, doesn't have receipt. Okay, or in BM it should be R E S I T. Okay, and when we pay, maybe there is no document to support it, like what, like gaji. Gaji is what is in English means salary. Okay, imagine you you pay. Let's say you have a business, you are the boss. Okay, and you want to pay salary, bayar gaji kepada pekerja pekerja your workers when you pay them let's say uh, uh, let's say muni okay the pergages name is muni so let's say muni punya gaji is about rm 3000 ringgit sebulan so when I pay to Muni, saya bayar gaji kepada Muni, Digo River Ringgit. Do you think that Muni akan uh, berikan saya receipt? No. Okay, Muni tak akan memberikan dokumen kepada saya because Muni is just a pekerja. So who is the one to to bring out the document? We are. Okay, kita, the boss, the, the company will have to create a document. So that document we will call it a voucher pembayaran. So let's say now the voucher pembayaran. So this is the voucher pembayaran and the name of your company. What's the name of the company? Ben Wahab Trading. And this is the address. Okay. Kamu punya address. Kat mana? Your office. And then to separate. Let's say this person named Kapau Singh. All right, so let's say the good package is Kapau Singh, then you put Kapau Singh. Lah. All right, so then the tare, okay, and then you will write here for what? Mumbaya, this is for policy insurance, but if for Kaji, then you will write Mumbaya Gaji Pekerja. Uh, then you put it there. So, uh, dengan tunai bagi tempo bermula bila, then how much? Then the signature. All right, and from here we can see that there are options for you. Is either two nine you buy it dengan two nine or you buy it dengan check. So if you buy it dengan two nine, then you have to cancel the check. If you buy it dengan check, then terbalik lah. So you have to, you know, then you have to cancel the two nine lah, meaning you are buy it dengan check. All right, so this is an example of voucher pembayaran. So when you look at this voucher pembayaran like that, so who is the one yang mengeluarkan document ini? So whenever you see the name on top, okay, nama ke atas. So orang ni, this person, is always the, the business or the person, okay, yang mengeluarkan. And then, yang kat bawah sini, 
the name at here at below is always the one yang menerima, the one that received the document. Clear? So this is uh, the voucher pembayaran. So what are the, the other contoh? Either gaji, uh, then this insurance, sometimes insurance will be here. Or kada bayaran may be here as well. So very important, you just have to read from the butiran. And from the butiran, they will tell you, what is this for? Okay, so this is voucher pembayaran. Now next. Star again, this is called a voucher tunai runcit. Alright, so what is a voucher tunai runcit? Document dalam untuk menunjukkan pembayaran secara tunai runcit. Now, when we bayar secara tunai, then we put into the voucher pembayaran. But when we bayar secara tunai runcit, then we will put into a document panggil voucher tunai runcit. Okay, now for now you are form 4, so you haven't learned the difference between the tunai, the buku tunai, uh, sorry, I will say the tunai and also the tunai runcit. Okay, these two are two different things. Tunai is tunai, tunai runcit is tunai runcit. So tunai is for the amount yang lebih tinggi. Okay, the higher amount. Like thousand, one thousand, two thousand, maybe five hundred, six hundred. But for tunai runcit, adalah bayaran tunai yang amount rendah. Like what? Sixteen ringgit. Can you see? I circle it. Sixteen ringgit. Ah, uh, five ringgit, ten ringgit, twenty three ringgit. Now all this amount yang kecil kecil punya normally will put into voucher tunai runcit. But when you say five hundred, six hundred. 400, 2,000. Uh, the difference, the difference of the amount between this one and this one. So all these 500, 600, 400, kita akan record dalam voucher pembayaran like this one, 600, put it here. Okay, so same thing about Chetuna Runcit, the name. So this name will be the uh, the company lah, the penegaan yang uh, bayar itu. Okay, then uh, ni, so these are the bungus sampo, stamp, how much, and then you add up because 16 ringgit, jumla, and then the tare, and this is the nombo voucher to runcit, and by the way, this is the nombo voucher pembayaran. So this is like a nombo receipt for you, okay, for reference purpose. Then uh, the name, okay, the dilurus kan oleh siapa, okay. Then, okay, next, the makluman, Debit. Whenever you see a matluman, either debit or credit, know that this is from bank. Okay? Tadi for all the document, like all this voucher, can you see this is from business? Okay, daripada penegaan. All this uh, memo, you see all the address, the name of the company. But for whenever you see a makluman, either debit or credit, this is issued. This is dikeluarkan oleh bank. Yes, I hear is in makluman daripada via bank. Okay, so you see that I told you always whenever you see the name on top, this is the one yang mengeluarkan dokumen tersebut. So you can see it's a bank gemilang berhad yang mengeluarkan dokumen ini. So same for maklumat credit is the bank gemilang is a bank that mengeluarkan dokumen tersebut. Okay, but what are the difference between a maklumat debit and maklumat credit? So for maklumat debit adalah uh, maklumat daripada pihak bank bahawa baki tunai di bank pemegang account telah berkurang. Who is the pemegang account? Kita. So when you open an account in let's say CIMB bank, okay, CIMB is the bank lah, right? Then kita yang bukakan account kat situ, us, we call ourselves a pemegang account. 
pemegang account. You know what I mean? So when kita dapat, let's say your post, okay, um, your petty post, then you receive a letter, an envelope. Okay, then you book out the envelope and then you, you, you see this panggil maklumat debit. Nah, so what is this maklumat debit for? To tell us, okay, untuk memaklumatkan uh, kita bahawa bagi tunai di bank kita telah berkurang. Okay, so let's say at, at first kita ada 5,000 ringgit baki dalam bank. The, the balance in bank. So when our bank balance jatuh minus 20 ringgit, okay, then the bank will send a letter to us. Tolak 20 ringgit. Masuk, akan berkurang lah. Okay, right. So, hantar tu siapa? Let's say kita ialah syarikat indah sendian berhad. Ha, kepada kita. So, what is our bank? This is our bank account number. And then, berapa? 20 ringgit. Why? Because, uh, this is for the buku check dan charge bank. So, you know, uh, for those that have a bank account, when you open a bank, and every year we have to pay a certain charge. It's called a charge bank. A charge bank. Right? Something like eight ringgit, 10 ringgit. All right. And for those that you know you have a, a check book in BM, we call it a buku check. The one that we saw, this one, uh, this is a buku check. So when you not other you want to apply for this buku check, you need to pay a certain fee as well. Okay, you need to buy it by the bank. Therefore, so for this receipt, this is telling us that you know uh, you are you have to pay for the buku check and charge bank. Okay, and so this is a makluman debit. Right? Uh? Be careful. Uh? You don't look at debit and say, oh, this is debit. So maksud uh, our baki tuna di dalam bank bertambah. No. All right? Because the Definition of debit from bank and the definition of debit from us different. The balik menu. Okay, so later uh, you will see. Okay, then the balik lah. So when we say a makluman credit, ah, uh, makluman credit ialah pihak bank bahawa baki tuna di bank pemegang akaun telah ber Tambah. Maksudnya, our account, the money in our account, what? Bertambah. Alright? So, why bertambah? So, you see, uh, bank gemina berhad yang mengeluarkan uh, dokumen ini kepada kita, syarikat indah sendian berhad, and then perkara apa? Faedah atas simpanan tetap pada kadar 4%. And we receive 350 ringgit. So what is the faedah atas simpanan tetap? So faedah is interest. Remember, faedah is interest. And simpanan tetap is uh, fixed saving or we call a fixed deposit. So it's something like a saving in the bank account. So you put the money in the bank account and then we get interest from the bank. So the bank straight away uh, add the money into our bank account. So when our bank account punya tunai, bertambah, then the bank will give us a makluman credit. Okay? So when you see makluman credit, means our money bertambah. And if you see a makluman debit, our money dalam bank berkurang. Alright? Do you understand so far? If yes, give me a yes in the chat box. Yes, All right. So now, before I continue, now you see, you wonder why maklumat debit then our money goes down. Kenapa credit in number credit, but why our money goes up? Okay, so it's very simple. If you can understand this illustration. Okay, 
So normally, okay, if you don't look at bank, so in accounting, you have debit and credit. It is uh, debit credit, a very common term in accounting. So this is a T, something that you have seen before when you were in BAP2, your PKK, right? So there's a T form, there's a T form. And then I told you that whatever is in this side is called the debit side. And whatever is on the right side is called the credit side. Okay. And what is debit? Debit means in. And credit means out. Okay, but some people, they, they, they think as debit as plus. Well, credit as minus. But this is not accurate. Okay, because if you have done, uh, because later when we move on to Buku Chatam Pertama and Leisure, then you will learn more uh, of this term, which is called a system Chatatan Begu. In English, we call it a double entry. So why double entry? So we have actually learned about this double entry in Bab 2. I tell you, every Uwis Negger, there must be at least dual account. Yeah, we have to do something about it, right? So when one is tamba, the other one at the tamba of Bukuram. You remember? So this is double entry. So when in the double entry, we either debit, or credit. So when, let's say when the money comes in, then we will say our bank account debit. Okay, when I draw barang niaga, I draw barang niaga, then my inventory berkurang. Then I will credit, I will say I credit uh, the inventory, but normally we don't say inventory, we say we credit jualan. That's why the jualan Normally, we will be in the credit side. Uh, when we beli barang niaga, okay, when you say beli barang niaga, the barang niaga akan comes in. When barang niaga comes in, then we say we debit the barang niaga. Okay, but at the same time, when I debit my barang niaga, what goes out? I pay, I buy up. To beli this uh, barang niaga, right? I pay for this. So my money will goes out. So my money goes out, then I say I credit my bank or two nine. Right? So far, do you understand the debit and credit? If yes, give me a DK, debit credit. Right, so this uh, later we you, you learn more about this debit credit side. We do more of this data entry, uh, sorry, a double entry. Okay, now next. So with that being said, right? So normally when we see our money bertamba, our tonight at our bank bertamba, then we will say kita debit bank, isn't it? Kita akan debit bank and then credit blah 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 blah. And if we say Credit bank masuk wang keluar, isn't it? This is wang masuk. Ah, and all this, remember, this is from our view of point. Okay, so from here, from our own accounting book, for what we are doing now, Okay, the debit and credit looks like that. Okay, but now let's talk about bank. So you have to know that in bank, okay, let's say CIMB bank. Okay, CMB bank is a business. CMB bank is a business. 
okay and let's say we have a uh, a business as well ourselves us let me check that okay it's all right so Zambi bank is a business Zambi bank do investment they take money from us the customers and then so we are actually the customers to Sammy Bank. Listen, so even though we put money into the bank, so that's why when you go to the, the branch, like Sammy Bank, May Bank, okay, then you need to queue, and then there's a customer service. Who was the customer? Kita lah, the customer, right? So when we go there, we have inquiries. Kita nak tanya seorang, nak buka, uh, nak buka account yang baru, nak apply for credit card, debit card. Okay, we go to there, and then they have to serve us. All right, so they have to uh, ask us about questions. Then uh, they have to answer our questions. And then uh, they will help us to do uh, what we want lah, okay? I mean, in the scope of their duties, all right? So let's say now I open an account in CMB Bank. So I will put money in the bank. Right. So when we put money into the bank, okay, then this is the CMB Bank has its own sheet, own account key. All right. And Kita ourselves have our own account. I mean, bank has its own account and we have our own account. All right. So here, normally we call, even though here in later, in later, you learn that, okay, this T, then we put account bank on top. Ah. But you have to know that this account bank is under us. Okay. Because this is in our business. But CMB bank has its own account. All right, so when we put money into the bank, I will debit 500 ringgit into the bank. Okay, then in the CMB bank statement, it will show, it will reflect on the credit side of the bank. Why? Because this 500 ringgit doesn't belong to CIMB bank. It is actually, whose one? It's actually Kita punya duit. You know what I mean? Because this 500 ringgit is not the CMB bank punya. It's kita punya duit. So when we not withdraw money daripada CMB bank, so let's say I want to withdraw money from the bank account. So I will withdraw 200 ringgit. Let's say 200 ringgit. So when I credit my bank, then in CMB bank statement, it will show on the debit side 200 ringgit. Is it? Even though you can do it, the other bank is credit because out, right? Credit means out. Okay, so out, 200. But at the same time, in CMB Bank, it is not that way. Okay, it is in reflection. Okay, so now let's say, yang tadi punya, the buku check or the charge bank, the bank want to charge us money. So when the, the bank charges money, then it will debit 50 ringgit. So when debit semi bank statement, then in our own account, it will show credit 50 ringgit because money our. But in bank, this 50 ringgit is actually goes into semi bank account. That's why if you have your own bank statement or your parents have a bank statement, you see the, the CMB bank or May bank here on top, and then there is a debit and credit. But now I found out, I realized that they no longer, I know, I'm not sure, is it just CMB bank? But for CMB bank, the reason uh, e statement, they don't put debit and credit. They put something like money received and uh, money withdraw, or something like that. So just to avoid the confusion. But before that, right, before this, right, normally they will use debit and credit. So when you see a credit other duit, 
So this is a good thing actually, meaning the money is coming in. So this is actually green color. Okay. But then if shown in the debit side of your bank statement, meaning these are the money that is going out. Either you pay for something or you, you draw it out. So this is actually in red. All right. So are you clear now? So for bank, from the view of point from the bank, is always uh, the, the opposite of what we see for the debit and credit. All right. So, okay. No, if okay, give me an okay. So this is uh, the, the short, not, this is kind of like, not short, uh, but uh, an explanation for the debit and credit. Okay, that's why for a car, right? for let's say house. Uh. For a house, uh, in bank, all right? For the bank is actually an asset. Okay? But then, even though in accounting, we say that a house is an uh, asset, Okay, in our sh our sheet lah. Okay, in the you do PKK right. Okay, then your asset is here on the debit side, and then if you have a house like premise, okay, you you consider it as an asset. But if you really know lah, if we put accounting aside, right, the house is actually a liability to us. It's actually a hutang. This is our hutang, but it is the asset of bank actually. How do I put it? So if you have a house, okay, so to us, it is actually a liability. But to the bank, it's actually an asset. Why? Because you have to know that normally when people buy houses, what do we use to buy? You ask your parents. Uh, okay, you ask your parents when, when you buy a house, do you use your own money to buy or you use the bank money to buy? Uh, they will tell you at first the 10% down payment, our own money. Okay, our money. But the remaining 90% is directed by the loan, pinjaman, from bank. So let's say if this house is 100,000 ringgit, right? So the 100,000 ringgit of 10% is wrapper. 10,000 ringgit, right? So if, if you want to get a 100,000 ringgit, you must have 10,000 ringgit on hand. Why? Because straight away, if you want this house, you straight away have to pay 10,000 ringgit. For the down payment. Okay, then the remaining 90,000 ringgit, the 90%, you have to pin jump Taribada Bank, which is here. You know what I mean? So the bank, either May Bank, and Bank, OCBC, M Bank, okay? So you look for the bank and then the bank will pin jump us 90,000. But of course, the bank won't be so stupid to pin jump us 90,000. So this 90,000 from the bank, bank will collect 90,000 for us and they will charge us interest. So in BM, we call it faeda, apa? Atas pinjaman. Because when bank lend us money, they will lend us the principal, if you learn maths, the principal, which is a 90,000. And then in addition of this 90,000, there is something called interest, the faeda. And this interest based on the rate of the bank. So now it's about 3%. Okay, and this 3% is not 3% times 90,000, so you get the amount, no. There is something 
you need to spread out for how many years? I don't know, like 30 years, okay, for the loan in Malaysia. So by the time you add up everything, uh, it's actually more than 90,000 times 3% equals how much? 2,000, uh, 2,700 ringgit, right? So you think, oh, interest is 2,700 ringgit. No. When you, when you spread out for 30 years, right? Okay, for a house or anything, lah, yeah, other interest when you, uh, you spread out for 30 years or a long time, it's actually more than this figure, 30 times. That's called a compounded interest. Okay, so normally, for 30 years, 3%, normally this figure will become times two at the end is the amount that you pay. So after 30 years, if you calculate the amount that you pay to the bank is actually about double. So it'll be 100, 180,000 ringgit that you have paid to the bank when you only borrow 90,000. The, the remaining 90,000 is actually the interest. These are the stuff that you, maybe your parents don't know, but I think they know, but you can ask them and try to do your own calculation. And then you see that you ask your parents, uh, very simple question. Okay, that, how much is this house? What is the price when you buy? Okay, then after that, you ask him, how much is the installment that he pays? every month because it is in BM we call Ansuran uh, Ansuran Bulanan. Okay, so it's monthly one. Okay, so this is the payment that we have to pay back to the bank. So he will tell you. So from this Ansuran, this installment, right, you, you ask him how many years? Let's say for 30 years. So 30 years are the proper bulan. 12 months. And every month you pay how much to the bank? Let's say 1,000. So you times up, you do your own maths. 12,000 times 30 years. Three hundred and sixty thousand. So meaning we pay 360,000 to the bank. Okay? But, you'd be surprised when he tell you that we bought it with 150,000 only. You see? So, your, the house is 150,000, but how come we pay 360,000? Huh? So, you minus it off, the 360,000 minus 150,000, meaning the 110,000 is the interest to the bank. So you can see how terrible it is. Okay. And the moment when you clear off this money, settle the all the loan, the 90% to the bank, then only this house is considered our asset. Have you noticed? Know Why? If you know, if uh, before you pay back this money, let's say you pay, you buy uh, the, the Ansuran, all right? Year one, you buy, uh, year two, you buy, uh, tahun tiga, tahun empat, tahun lima, but yo, tahun enam, oh, suddenly you got COVID, tata apa, COVID 20, 26, or whatever, or maybe another problem come, okay? Then maybe uh, you, you lost a job. You can't pay back the money, all right? So normally the bank will give you some period, maybe one month, two months, three months, maybe maximum six months. Okay, after six months, if you still don't pay the installment, okay, let's say every month, what the installment is 1,000 ringgit, right? Tadi Chonto, so every month the installment is 1,000. So if you don't pay for like this six months, then the bank will come and look for you. And ask why you're not paying and blah, 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 blah. And at the end, if you, you really can't pay back the money, then the bank will come and take your house. 
So what is the very what is the moral of the story? Meaning, before you pay off the loan, this money, the the ninety percent of the loan to the bank, then the house is still the bank's house. It's not our house. Ah, so if that's why I say this house normally ninety nine percent. This house is actually the asset of the bank. It's not our asset. It's still our liability. But in accounting, of course, we say, oh, this house is actually asset, asset, asset. But actually, if you look it in reality, the house, if you haven't paid off the, the loan, the hutang, the house is still not ours. It's still the bank's asset. It's our liability. So when we clear off all these things, then only we can consider this as our asset. Yeah, so next time, you, you be smart. Lah. All right, so of course, there are ways to, to, to deal with this uh, property. That's why you see, uh, if you go and do your own research, okay, if you do laws of reading, you found that the rich people, okay, the millionaires, billionaires, the top billionaires or the top 10 rich people in the world, they have properties or we call it real estate. Because if you want to be really uh, rich and make money, the one of the best investment is actually houses if you know how to play with it. All right. So these are the things that you need to go and learn yourself, find out yourself so that, I mean, I don't know, but personally, I think that, you know, we should, uh, for us to make our life easier, then we should achieve something called financial freedom. All right, what is financial freedom? Financial freedom means you can live your life comfortably. All right, meaning when you want to get a, you want to go and to go to a restaurant and eat, you don't have to care about how much is the the, the price of the dish. So you just order one thousand ringgit, order lah, small thing. All right, so you just want to eat what you want to eat. You want to go where you want to go. You know when uh. You, you want to buy what you want to buy. During holiday, you go Australia, wherever you want to go. If you don't want to go, you don't want to go. But if you want to go, you go. So that is what I call a financial freedom. All right? So make sure, you know, I hope everyone here, you can achieve a financial freedom. So I think that's very, very uh, important. Lah. All right? So next, come back to today's uh, topic. So... Uh, yeah, that's, that's all for the Maluman debit and Maluman credit. Okay, so can I move on? If yes, give me a yes. So I hope everyone is still awake. A bit. Sing uh, it, right? Off topic. But I hope you learned something from it. Okay, now let's continue. Bit tonight. So you can see that this is a star as well. So this is a document that will show you how to get a job list chart tonight at our chat. All right. Uh, so if you see this, good tonight is one of the top three most common uh, document. Okay. So this bill tonight, how do we know if it's a bill tonight? Look at this title, you know, this is a bill tonight. Lah. Maybe it's a bill tonight. Okay. And this bill tonight, we use it when it is a charter to nine the chat. We use it when it is a charter to nine at our sachara chat. Okay, I don't care if it is draw at our belief. Okay, when I draw barang near just a charter to nine at our chat, then I use blue to nine. When I believe barang near just a charter to nine at our chat, then I use blue to nine. If it is a charter credit, no, we don't use B to nine. That's why the B to nine has the word to nine here. Okay, so if you look at this B to nine, the title and then the name, so this is the penegaan yang mengeluarkan dokumen ini. 
Okay, so there is a asal, there's two. Either asal or salinan. Okay, asal in English means original. Then salinan means what? Copy lah or fake lah. Okay, copy. So normally when you go to buy something, but uh, biasanya is those furniture. Okay, example furniture. Okay, perabot. To that parable. So you go to the furniture, let's say you want to get a sofa for your house. All right. So you chose a sofa, 9,000 ringgit. Okay, very good. You want to get the 9,000 ringgit sofa. Okay. So when you believe you buy it in cash, then orang itu, orang yang jual uh, sofa itu, okay, ada satu buku punya, if you have seen it before. Okay. Normally now is use a machine, okay, printer, uh, laptop, and print out. Okay, but if you've seen before, they have a, a buku and then they will write on it. Okay, and then on top one, we we'll tear out and then they have a few uh, copies under, under it. All right, so on top one, yang tulis bunya, we call it the asal, the original copy. So the top one, the asal bunya, akan diberikan kepada the pembeli. While yang copy bunya salinan, akan disimpan oleh penjual itu. This is yang pembeli simpan. So in conclusion, asal punya pembeli simpan, yang salinan punya penjual simpan. Okay, so for example, for this one, who is the pembeli? Aru Mugam. Who is the penjual? Syarikat in Indah Senyam Berhad. So, if soalan tanya, okay, dokumen ini, siapa yang mengeluarkan uh, dokumen ini? That answer is, Syarikat Indah Senyam Berhad. Okay, next question. Siapakah yang akan menyimpan dokumen ini? Then the answer will be, Aru Mugam. Alright, berapa ringgit? 40 ringgit. Okay, and bayar dengan apa? Bayar dengan dunai. Right, if buy dengan check, then they will cancel tonight and then it will be checked. Okay, now next, look at this one. So, did apa dokumen ini? Bill tonight. Siapa yang mengeluarkan bill tonight ini? Ban Wahab Trading. On the top, always on the top yang mengeluarkan dokumen itu. Okay, then siapa yang menyim, uh, menyimpankan dokumen tersebut? So, you have to look at this one. Is it a salinan? Yes, salinan. So, salinan maksud Siapa yang menyimpan? The penjual yang menyimpan. Alright, so uh, siapa yang menyimpan kan? Ban Wahab Trading. Berapa ringgit? 580 ringgit. Bayar dengan apa? Dengan tunai. Pada bila? Ah, tarik ke sini. Okay, is it clear? If clear, give me a clear in the chat box. So this is a bill. Do I make sure you know Siapa, siapa, alright? Because later in chapter bab empat, ah, you will see something. Okay, bab empat, you will see something called document convert to buku cadangan pertama. Okay, if this one you don't know, eh, eh mati, alright? Tak ada mati lah, masuk hospital saja. Okay, <laughs> alright. Nah, okay, remember before the class, I told you that there are three D. Right, the 3D, tiga dua. So now, we'll come to the first D. Alright, so the first D, what is the first D? So the first D, the first dua, ialah, the dua cara mengetahui pembekal atau pelanggan. So how do we know? Like from this statement, how do we know if siapa pembekal, siapa pelanggan? Pembekal means the, the buyer, or, eh, pembekal, sorry. Pembekal means the penjual atau the seller or English we call supplier. Alright, then pelanggan the customer what? So, what the customer? The customer is the one that the buyer lah, the buyer lah, we call it, right? Pem buyer or in BM we call pembeli. So, you just remember which whichever one uh, is uh, easy for you to remember, then you use the term. Alright, so what are the dual charges? So, there are two ways to know 
Is it a pembekal? Is it a buyer? Or a, a seller? Alright, so number one is through this salinan and asal. Alright, so when you look at this salinan and asal, we can straight away know if orang ini adalah uh, pembekal atau pelanggan. Okay, so how do you remember? So when you look at this salinan, have a S here. So this salinan, the S is for seller. Or you don't eat that suka seller, then you can go for a higher level we call a supplier. Okay, you know what is seller, right? Seller means the penjau or the pembekal. Ah, okay, then what about asal? So if salinan is for seller, then asal obviously is for bayar, the pembeli or the pelanggan. And yeah, now check. So if, saya tanya, Siapa yang memegangkan dokumen ini? The bill tonight ini, so siapa yang memegangkan dokumen ini? So when you look at asal, if you use this one, then you see we know that asal ialah the buyer. Who is the buyer? Arumugam. You get what I mean? So if you look at this one, look, look at the document on your right, the salinan, as for what? As for seller or the supplier. Who is the supplier? The pembuka. All right. So who is the pembuka? Who is the seller? Ini Ben Wahab trading. All right. Because the seller is always on top, and that leads to the second D. Not the second D, but number two, the the second chara to mengetahui pembuka pelanggan. So you look at what? Look at the kedudukan nama penyegaan. Is it atas or bawah? Atas mean what? Atas mean up here lah. Bawah means here, bawah. Alright, so when you look at all the documents, it's very obvious. Atas, bawah. This one don't have, like this one. Atas, bawah. Ah. Atas, ah. normally, so whenever you see the atas one, who are they? Atas ialah orang yang mengeluarkan dokumen itu. And who is the one yang mengeluarkan dokumen itu? Normally, it's all the seller and the supplier yang atas. So, when you see atas, A, S, seller. Alright. Okay. Then, the bawah one, you take this B, the bawah will be B for buyer. Ah. So when you look at the atas bina is always the penjual, the supplier, and then the bawa B for buyer. So you go to the McDonald, okay? You order a Mac chicken set, large, and then you have to pay or you use the thing, and then the, the the receipt will come out. So when the receipt come out, what is the name on top? Is it our name? We see Wong Gasitu. No, takkan. What we see, McDonald in the middle of the receipt, then the address, and then long like hell. I don't know why the hell is that the receipt of McDonald is always very long, like this long. Uh, and then it's just order one part, and then the rest, I don't know what they're saying. Okay, but what am I trying to say is that the one, the seller, who's the seller there? The McDonald. Lah. That's why the McDonald name is on top, atas, middle. Ah. Uh, so, whenever you see the name on top here, atas sini, this is the seller. Yang bawah, the buyer. Atas, seller. Ben Wahab Trading. Bawah, Jora Cafetaria. This is the buyer. Alright? So, do you now understand the first D? If yes, give me D in the chat box. Give me a D in the chat box if you understand this one. And it's very easy to use. So you just need to remember some keyword like S. So when you, whenever you see salinan, means this is the seller yang memegang dokumen ini. Right? If you want to know siapa tu seller, atas siapa seller. So you look at atas. So yang atas is do is always the seller. Alright? So now next, let's continue the remaining uh, document. Almost finished. Okay, invoice. Ah. Uh, 
if your parents is in a company working, you know, normally we heard about invoice. They will mention invoice, invoice, invoice. What the heck is invoice? Invoice is the document that will show you that credit will be credited. Okay. Tadi, I say, when do we use B29? B29 is when kita beli atau kita jual melalui tunai atau cek. Then we use B29. But, what about social credit? Ah, uh, When you beli atau jual social credit, then we use invoice. I mean, so it's very obvious. So when you look at invoice, we know that this is a charge credit. We, we don't have to think twice. Okay, when you look at bill tonight, also that is a charge, apa, a charge check or a charge tonight. Why do we have to know is it a charge tonight atau a charge check atau a charge credit or a charge tonight? Because we need to record it. Remember when in bab two. Uh, when you see secara tunai, then we have to uh, debit. I mean, in dalam bank itu, we have to plus. If kita jual barang secara debit, uh, jual barang niaga secara tunai, then you have to add 1,000 ringgit in the bank. And then inventory, I have to minus 1,000. Right. But then if it is secara credit, then inventory same, minus 1,000. But in the account belum terima, if I draw barang langga secara credit, then in the ABT, I have to uh, plus, is it, yeah, plus 1,000, like that, All right, so it's very important, is it secara credit or secara tunai, and how do we know, by looking at this document, all right, okay, now, let's, uh, let's continue, so same thing, in invoice, we have a salinan and asal, so when you look at this salinan, do you know who siapa yang memegangkan uh, dokumen ini? So as for salinan, salinan, I mean as of course for salinan, okay. Salinan as ini for what? For seller. Ah, uh, so meaning seller yang memegangkan dokumen invoice ini. So who is the seller sini? Seller you always look at yang atas itu. Alright, atas. So seller meaning. Aspirasi Komunikasi Enterprise sedang memegangkan dokumen invoice ini. Right? And jual kepada siapa? Jual kepada jaja handphone shop. Right? So this is the buyer. Buyer, the pembeka, I mean pembeka pula. The pembeli. Right? Bila? Tarik 8 August 26. Wah, 206. Wah, so long. Ago. Okay, now this is the number invoice 1002. So you believe 9450. Now look at this thing. You see that there is Joomla here. After that, there's a discount. Yager. Okay, so what is a discount? Yager? Later I'll explain. Is it yeah, yeah, here? So later I'll explain to you what is a discount. And then you have to minus the discount and get a Joomla receipt. So this is the amount that we will record. Okay, we don't record this one. We record the latest one. Okay, and then you will see some sharat sharat over here. This is a policy, a credit policy. So another discount again, but this is called discount to nine. Tadi ialah panggil discount niaga. This is panggil discount to nine. And we see a 10%, 2 hari, 5%, 14 days. What are these? Okay, later I will elaborate it. Okay, and then you see a K and K D K K and K D K means the full sentence is here. K silapan dan K tinggalan D K cualikan. So K and K D K. Okay, let me explain this K and K D K to you first. So let's say if you close up to invoice, let's say you close nine thousand four hundred fifty. So this is the amount. Okay, and you you tap letak k and k d k. Yeah, we don't put k and k d k ah in this document, but later we realize that yo salah tekan ah. It should be one nine four five zero. 
Okay, it should be 19,450. But when I log on document, it because human, uh, human got one error called human error. Ah, okay, so sometimes when you're doing maths, you calculate wrongly, you take on the calculator, you miss one figure. So same thing, when you do this kind of invoice, you use human strength to do it, sometimes you will left out one, one digit. And 19,450 and 9,450, a huge difference, you know. 10,000. 10,000, you can do what? You can get a lot of stuff as a, as a student, right? So, if you invoice in me, kita dah ada K and KDK, which is kesilapan dan ketinggalan dikecualikan, then, sorry boss, tak boleh tukar lagi invoice ini. Walaupun is 19,450, but salah tekan is 9,450, so it will be 9,450. No correction for it. I, the customer just have to pay the, this figure on the invoice. But if dalam invoice ini, I will put K and K decay in it. Okay, so like this one here, other K and K decay. Ah, so later when I realize it, hey, it should be this figure. All right, then I will take this invoice or I will take the customer. Okay, now bro, look at look at here. Huh? Uh, there is some issue, technical issue uh, while processing the invoice. So the actual amount should be 19,450 ringgit. Okay, but I you know accidentally put it as 9,450. Okay, and then the customer will be like, hey, bro, don't be like that. Lah. Okay, you already put it like that. So I will follow the one on the invoice. Now, when the customer say like that, then now it's our turn to reply, right? So we say that, uh, excuse me, bro. You look at this invoice, right? Down here, there is something called K and K decay. Ah, so when you have a K and K decay, this is the full term of it, meaning I can change, you know, I can correct the figure to the actual one, which is 19,450. And the brother cannot say anything anymore because following the, the principle of accounting and the law, we argue again at the end, will be the one that uh, won the case, all right? Which is we can change it to 19,450 because of K and KDK. So now you can see that why is it so important for K and K DK be included there? All right, that's why normally when you see most, right, there's always a K and KDK down there. Okay, so after that, okay, come to the 2D. Now, the second D is actually the dual genius discount. So in accounting, there are two types of discount. Number one is the discount Niagara. Number two is the discount Tunai. What are the difference? So the discount Niagara, or you can actually call it a Potongan Haga scenario. Haga scenario means the least price. What is the least price? The price on the price tag. Okay, why do we give up discount niaga? Untuk menggalakkan pembelian secara pukau. What is sepukau? Pukau means banyak. Okay, so very common. When you go to shopping center, you want to uh, get something, let's say Adidas. Okay, so I'm a fan of Adidas, not Nike. All right, so I, I like Adidas more than any other sport brand. All right, so Adidas, when you go into Adidas store, they normally they will have this sales, uh, the, the board uh, or promotion board out there, and they'll say, uh, when you get two pieces, you, you get. 30% off, right? And when you buy three and above, then you get extra 10% of discount. Now, normally, you see something like that. I think Nike also got this kind of stuff. Uh, so why do we put this on discount? This is actually a discount. Nego is discount nego. Untuk menggalakkan pembelian secara pukau. So they're actually encouraging 
Okay, Mengala encourage us, the buyer, to buy more. So the more you buy, the more discount you get. So this is discount niaga. And this discount niaga will appear here. So let's say you get 500 ringgit on the price tag, which is a scenario, the Haga scenario. All right. But this is before discount. After discount, discount niaga, let's say 10%. Then how much is this now? 500 times 10 percent, you get 50 ringgit. So you minus 50, 450 ringgit. So 450 ringgit is the amount yang perlu dibayar. And in invoice, we record we based on this figure. That's why I say look at invoice. We look at the jumla here. All right, we don't care about this because this is before discount. When you pay, we pay what is after discount, the discount niaga. All right, so this is the first discount niaga. And what is discount to now? Okay, in addition to the discount niaga, if, okay, let me read it first. It is a potongan haga invoice. What is the haga invoice? This one. This one, this is the haga invoice. So meaning after the discount, we have another discount. And what is this discount for? It is to menggalakan Pembayaran invoice pada kada segera. You know what segera? Segera means as fast as possible. Ah, that's why when you scroll down, you see the charat here is for discount tonight. So when you see ten percent to hari, what does it mean? Meaning, if you pay. This amount dalam tujo hari, then you will get another ten percent discount. Ah, uh, but if you pass this seven days, but is within fourteen days, ah, uh, then you get not ten percent but just five percent. Better than nothing, right? So you get another five percent if you pay within fourteen days. Meaning. The faster you pay, the more discount you get, the more money you save. So this is the discount. So let's say from here, I should pay 450 ringgit. But based on this charat, 10% to do hurry, 5% 14 days. So if I pay dalam three days, so how much do I have to pay? So 450 times 10%, I get 10% discount, 45 ringgit. So meaning the amount that I have to pay now is 450 minus 45 ringgit equals to 405. Now, three days. If dalam 10 days, if dalani, I pay in 10 days, so that will be 5% year based on this uh charade. All right, 5%. So 5% is how much? 450 times 5%. 22.5. So amount you have to pay 450 minus 22.50 cent, you get 427.50 cent. So we are a bit messy. Okay, so can you see it? So if you pay within three days, we just pay 405. But if you pay 10 days later, then you become 427 ringgit 50 cent. Meaning extra, you see how much? Huh? Meaning more you have to pay. If after 14 days, how much do we have to pay? Hagini. 450. No discount. Just the 450 yang. So lepas discount niaga. That's why this discount tonight adalah untuk menggalakkan encourage uh, faster payment. Alright, pembayaran invoice pada kadar yang segera. So you can see, so these are the two uh, discount. Discount niaga, discount tonight. One is based on the harga senarai, the list price. And then another discount tonight is based on the harga invoice. Okay.
If they are okay, give me another D again. This is a second D. You must know. All right. So now if we come back to here. Okay. So when you look at this invoice, okay. So very simple. From this invoice, I can tell a lot of stories. Like this one, Asa. So from this Asa, we can know that siapa yang memegangkan dokumen ini. So Asa A, meaning this is for buyer. So who is the buyer? Buyer is always got bawah. This is not the B for bawah. So siapa? Puan Mahani yang memegangkan invoice ini. And Puan Mahani perlu bayar berapa ringgit? 9,400 ringgit. But if Puan Mahani bayar 9,400 ringgit dalam tujuh hari, then Puan Mahani akan dapat another 5%. Meaning, if dalam tujuh hari, the 5% will be how much? 9,400 times 5%. You tap a discount 470 ringgit. This, this is panggil discount 29. Okay, so berapa ialah amount yang perlu dibayar? So use 9,400 dollar 470 the discount, you get 8,930. Okay, and below. It May 2021, this invoice is issued. So, siapa yang meng mengeluarkan invoice tersebut? Sulia Berhad. Who is Sulia Berhad? Sulia Berhad ialah pembekal, the seller. Right? Nombor receipt, nombor invoice, this one, 2171. Okay, and ada KNK DK, KNK DK, kesilapan dan ketinggalan dikecualikan. Alright, so this is invoice for you. And when do we see invoice? When it is secara credit. And when it's secara tunai, we will see bill tunai. Ah, okay, so next. Okay, so next we see a nota debit. So this is a nota debit and nota credit. Uh, look carefully, uh, this is nota bukan makluman. Uh. When it is makluman, then it is from the bank. All right, but if this is a nota debit, meaning this is from the penegan, penegan. All right, so when you see a nota debit, meaning there is an invoice tambahan yang digunakan untuk menambahkan baki hutang dalam invoice. Okay, so there is tambahan invoice. Okay, so normally is like that. So when you have an invoice, like tadi ya, okay, tadi I say what? It should be 19,450. But in this invoice, I only write 9,450. So what about the other 10,000? Luckily, I got K and KDK. So now, I have to collect another document to tell the customer that, hey, bro, this is another, you have, uh, you have to pay for another 10,000 ringgit. So how do we do that? We have to book another document and it is called a nota debit. Can you see? Invoice tambahan. So this nota debit, I will book up and then there I will put another 10,000 ringgit. So this 10,000 ringgit ialah untuk menambahkan baki hutang. Can you see? Is to add up the hutang in the invoice. Okay? So you see this is nota debit. Okay, asal. So siapa yang memegangkan dokumen ini? Asal. Maksud is kedai kasut. Azun, why kedai kasut azun? Because asal is for the bayar. Bayar. Alright? So meaning kedai kasut azun have to pay another 24 ringgit. You know what I mean? And then for the nota debit, salinan, who will be holding the salinan one? S means the seller. The seller always ke atas, meaning siapa? Kedai buku tan alat tulis rozim. So this is the one that they pegang, but who is the one to pay? For this 150 ringgit, the 150 ringgit is always the pembeli, the kedai buku sina. 
Why? Because beli the pembeli, the buyer need to buy ah. Right, that's why this 150 is for this kedai uh, buku sina to pay. Right, it's not uh, kedai buku dan alat tulis dan rezim ah. It's for them to pay. I mean, if they are the one to mengeluarkan nota debit and this is for kedai buku sina to pay. Right, so this is nota debit. And then there's another one thing called nota credit. And this nota credit might be a bit uh, confusing, but remember, when you see a nota credit, you just need to remember something called a KP. When you see a nota K, then you link with P. Oh, it's a KP. KP, you see nombu KP, nombu KP, meaning a nombu ka pengenalan. Right? So this is where the KP from. But of course, in here, we are not talking about the card pengenalan, your IC, we're not talking about that. We are talking about the K must link with the P and this P means pulangan. Ah. Alright? And later you see that this pulangan, there is pulangan berlian and pulangan jualan, which you will learn in your bab form. Okay, here I will just uh, quickly bring you through. So, obviously, pulangan, you akan mengulangkan your baki hutang. Conto, okay, like this one. Uh, you uh, telah rosak. So, you, you buy a shoe, lepas tu, you dapati, eh, kasu ini dah rosak lah, bro. Then, you want to return, refund. Okay, so, when you return or refund, it is a pulangan. So when other pulangan, then we have to use nota credit. You know what I mean? So the K always link with P. So whenever you say nota credit, it's still we think of pulangan. Uh, okay, then you only have to find out is it a pulangan belian ke or pulangan jualan? Uh, then very simple. All you need to do is look at uh, this. Asal, or this one, asal A for orang yang beli. Ah, so, asal for B, maksud B ini is for, actually for belian. So, when you see a nota credit for pulangan, K for pulang, uh, credit is always for pulangan, and you see asal for belian, maksud this is a pulangan belian. Okay, later, later, okay. At first, you don't stress out yourself because I've done this a lot of times. So for those that can see it, of course, uh, straight away you can see it. Like this one. Nota credit, I know K must always link to pulangan. But I don't know. Is it the pulangan jualan? What is pulangan jualan? Meaning, I am the seller. Ada orang pulangkan kasut kepada saya. That is a pulangan jualan. What about pulangan belian? Pulangan belian meaning I am the buyer. Saya yang beli kasut. And sekarang saya nak pulangkan kasut ini kepada uh, orang itu yang jual punya. Yeah, what, what I mean now? The difference between pulangan belian and pulangan jual. And now from this document, how do we know? Should we record for pulangan belian or pulangan jual? So that's why I teach you all the, all the D. All right? And with this one, salinan, the S is for seller. Seller, S. Sell, sell in BM, maksud, jual, jualan. Therefore, from this document, we straight away can tell that this is to record in the pulangan jualan. And who is the seller here? Inilah. Who is the buyer? Pemborang uh, Ismail. What about here? Who is the seller? Syarikat Indah Senia Bahad. Who is the buyer? The Kedai Kasut Azwar. But most importantly, we need to know is it to record in pulangan bulan or pulangan jual? Do you understand? If yes, give me a U. Sure not. Uh, okay, we, later we do more exercises, especially in chapter 4. Chapter 4 and chapter 5. You come across all this, is it whether you will be confused like, whether to record in pulangan belian ke or pulangan jualan, is it in belian or jualan? You see? So, 
when you see a debit, not a debit, very simple. It's either record in Berlian or Jualan. Right? So, Berlian, you look at this asal. Lah. So, asal for B, maksud, I will record in Berlian. If not a debit, you see number salinan, salinan S for seller, seller jual, I will record in Jualan. Very simple. But if what you see is nota credit, then you need to add one more term in front, which is pulangan. Then you use the same D that you learned from just now, the asal or salinan, asal or salinan. All right? Okay. Next, next, next. Uh, this is a receipt. Rasmi. Okay. So then we have this receipt Rasmi. And this receipt Rasmi is always go with uh, invoice. When I have invoice, then later on, I will have receipt Rasmi. Okay, later I will explain to you, no worries. So now, Tajuk receipt Rasmi, very obvious. Okay, same thing. They have Asa and Salina. So when you look at this Asa, we can tell that siapa yang memegangkan, right? So who is the one yang memegangkan dokumen ni? Buyer, the B. So who is the buyer here? Always yang kat bawah, ini. Alright, kedai kesut azon. Then they will tell you for what? Untuk menjelaskan imos. Alright, how much? 484. Dengan apa? Dengan check. Can you see it now? So, so this is dengan check. So another one. Look on the right. Receipt Rasmi as well. S salinan. For seller. Jualan. Alright, so seller. Who is the seller? Always on top. Membekal alatan pejabat Remy yang memegangkan dokumen ini. So from here, you can see that dia menerima one from Mega Training. You have to know that seller is always young. It's not always, but normally it's the one yang menerima one. While the buyer is the one yang membayar, right? B for buyer, buyer, buy, right? So, when you see receipt Rasmi, meaning this 1,000, you know, this 484 masuk bank account syarikat indah, siapa bayar? Kedai Kasut Azon. So, this 1,296 is masuk bank account, pembeka alatan, pejabat, siapa yang bayar? is actually mega trading. Right? But if you want to know siapa yang memegang dokumen ini, then we have to look at this one. All right, on this one. Okay, then the third D. So the third D is dua cara membeli atau menjual. Okay, so there are two ways. So I think I roughly explained this before. So it's either secara check or tunai atau secara credit. Actually, secara check or tunai is the same method. It's just that one you write check and the one you write tunai. But it's the same. Why? Because you pay on the spot right away now you pay the money being transferred but for secure credit is i get what i want or i sell what i sell but the money later so maybe i'll receive it satu bulan later you know what i mean or i'll pay later one month later two months later not sure yet that's why it's secure credit Right, but check in tonight. You go to McDonald's, you pay now. If you don't pay now, you can't get to eat the uh, Mac chicken. So this is the two ways. So now, the two different ways have different way to record them. So like for the search chart, if it's search chart, check or tonight, then we use Google tonight. You know what I mean? But if it is search chart credit, then first I will have invoice. And then I will have receipt runs me. Invoice is when kita ambil barang. Okay? But after one month later, satu bulan later, let's say satu bulan later, I pay. Ah, so when I pay, then I will get receipt runs me. If I don't pay, then I don't get receipt. Lah. So the receipt runs me is the bukti bahawa saya telah 
buyer. If I am the buyer, if I'm a seller, is to book the gun. Saya telah menerima wang daripada pelanggan. So this is resi- resmi. But for B two nine, you don't have to because straight away settle, settle payment, settle transaction. All right. So this is an example. You can go home and check for yourself. So if secara credit, sorry, secara check of two nine. So you got a seller and I'm the buyer. Let's say I buy the barang niaga from seller. So I will get the barang niaga and on the spot, I pay him either two nine or check. So when I pay him, after I pay him, straight away, the bot will give me bill to nine. And I will get the asal because asal is for buyer. And at the same time, Bob will keep one receipt or keep one document for himself, which is a bill to nine, sunny nine. Right now, the second way is secure credit. Now, if it's secure credit, let's say now I am the seller now, okay, and I sell to Jeffrey. So Jeffrey buy the barn yager from me, but Jeffrey say, "Hey, secure credit lah. Okay, now I don't have uh, too much of money, so I will pay you back when I uh sell the barn yager to other people." All right. So with that being said, if secure credit, then I have to book a document bank invoice. Asal. So from asal here, I know that all oh, Jeffrey is the buyer, and at the same time, I will keep one. I have to keep my own record, right? So I will keep one invoice, bangi invoice salinan. As for seller, that's why I'm a seller here. You know what I mean? Okay. Then maybe one month later, Jeffrey is going to do it, and now he pay me the money, or either check or tunan lah cash. So after he pay me, of course straight away I have to write receipt to Jeffrey. Okay, it's a proof. Or else, if I don't write any receipt for him, then there's no bookie. Then one month later I can claim from Jeffrey. Hey, Jeffrey, you haven't paid me yet. Then Jeffrey says, "Hey, I really paid you last month, but don't have receipt, no document." So then we can argue for 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 a very long time. So that's why we need to have formality. Even though we are friends, but we need to have formally. We need to issue a document. So now I have to issue document called receipt rasmi to Jeffrey, and because Jeffrey is a buyer, so he will have an asal. And at the same time, because I really issue one document, I will keep one copy for myself, a receipt rasmi, yang salinan. So that's all. Do you understand the whole chapter three? If okay, if if you understand at least fifty percent, they both give me okay in the chat box. Of course, this is uh recorded, and you'll be in a good classroom, so you can watch it again and again and again when you're free. Okay, but make sure you must master the three D. That I mentioned just now. Okay, the do the tiga dua, dua cara untuk mengetahui the pembekal dan the pembeli, and then another D is the dua jenis discount, and then the third D ialah yang tadi ini dua cara untuk beli atau jual. Alright, so once you know this one, you go to uh, bab four, bab five, easy, easy. Alright. Of course, before and the class. All right. Ah, uh, so this is the tadi ini ya lah PowerPoint niya nota. Okay, and then this is dalam ah uh, PDF ah uh, Word form lah. All right. So I really simplify down, so you can just go through it. And then important, you can see salinan supplier seller as a for buyer. And then even though that you can see there is a secure credit. But know that there is no secure debit, yeah. Okay, you think that there's debit side and credit side, but there is no secure debit. Okay, in payment, either you believe secure to not other check or you believe secure credit. All right, so then okay, quickly we still have some time, so let's do some questions because next class I don't want to come back here again. 
Okay, so very quick question. So all these document questions are very simple. You just need to understand it and then you can do it very quickly. So I will be very quick. So look at this question one. So Wong adalah blah, blah, blah. So Wong is the penegakan early X. Yang menjauh, bloom, bloom, bloom. Okay. And then from here, we can know that asal. Who is the one yang memegang asal? The buyer. Right. So who is the buyer here? Always got bawah lah. Penegakan TDX. So we are the penegakan TDX. And you see, so if someone tak beritahu who are we, we can show it from here. The document. Right. So A, mengapakah syarikat Telkom sebenarnya berhak memberikan diskaun 20% kepada penegakan TDX? So why? Kenapa? So kenapa syarikat Telkom uh, give us the discount? 20% a discount yang good. So, you need to know the the maksud, the fungsi of this discount yang good. So, this discount yang good adalah untuk so, adalah untuk um, apa? Menggalakan if you look back at the definisi menggalakan uh, apa? Pelanggan right? The customer menggalakan pelanggan untuk uh, menggalakan pelanggan supaya membeli secara banyak or secara pukau is it pukau p u k a l that's very correctly nah secara pukau nah so you can actually bring this the financing into it menggalakkan pembelian secara pukau alright so there you go one map okay then b so apakah masuk K and K D K very simple. Okay, so you refer back K and K D K je lah. Kesi lapan dan ketinggalan di kecualikan. But of course, in exam, if they ask, you cannot copy. So you need to store it in your head. Alright. So, kesilapan is what? Mistake. Ketinggalan is what? Uh, omission. Okay, you left out some part. Okay, then dikecualikan is uh, exempted. Okay, see. Berapakah amount yang perlu dibayar oleh peningkatan TDX jika bayaran dibuat? Uh, so, they are asking us if we pay this bill, this uh, invoice, pada 8 July 2020. So, how much? Berapa amount yang perlu dibayar? So, now, Ask yourself a question. When is this invoice being issued? Bilakah invoice ini dikeluarkan? 3rd of July. So, if kita bayar on 8th of July, so, kira lah, okay, after 3rd will be what? 4, okay, 4, 5, 6, 7, So, kita bayar dalam 5 hari. Okay, if I pay in 5 days, what is the syarat here? 7 hari, then I get 5%. If lebih daripada tujuh hari, tak ada, tak ada discount. So, maksud, I can get 5% discount. So, from here, maybe you can do uh, some working if you want to. So, discount will be 5%. So, which 5% you use based on this one? The Haga invoice. So, the Haga invoice is 7,200 times 5%. Then, you get... Much seven thousand two hundred times five percent, you get three hundred and sixty. Okay, then this is just a discount, or you can see this is a discount two nine, right? This is actually a discount two nine. Then, haven't done yet. We want the amount yang perlu dibayar. So, how much do we need to pay actually? So, amount perlu dibayar is actually equals to use back this 7,200 minus the 360, the discount. And you will get how much? 7,200 
minus 360 get rn make sure you put in unit very important at the end answer 840 this is the answer for amount yang perlu dibayar okay so it's a very simple question you can finish it in five minutes okay so next uh, look at this nota credit so quickly we go to a b c so a Siapakah yang mengeluarkan nota kredit D tersebut? So, keluarkan. So, who is the one that issue? Always on top. Okay, the seller must be the one that mengeluarkan document. So, I sure we can tell the answer. So, for 1A, I mean, sorry, 2A, siapa? You just put in the name lah. Perniagaan LED ELEC. Okay, then B. Mengapakan nota kredit disediakan? So, nota kredit disediakan kerana uh, apa? lampu tidur LED telah rosak. You can say that. Or you can say, nota kredit adalah untuk mengurangkan baki hutang. So another answer, so you can either choose one, but if you're not sure the actual definisi, then uh, sometimes you can use from here. So you can say, uh, kerana uh, lampu, atau you can say kerana barang niaga. So this is actually barang niaga. Okay, inventory, perniagaan uh, barang niaga telah rosak. That's why we need a nota credit. Okay, barang uh, ini telah rosak dan telah dipulangkan. Uh, telah dipulangkan. And always, whenever you see a credit, always remember the what the KP, the P for pulangan. Okay, last C. Siapakah yang menyimpan nota kredit salinan? Now, it's time to test us. So, the salinan is always as for the seller, right? And then, the nota credit, the asal, is for the buyer. So, from here, we just have to know who is the seller. Who is the seller? The penegan LED. Who is the buyer? The penegan Delta. So, you sure we can tell the answer. So, the nota credit salinan will be Salo is a penyagaan LED electronic and then the nota credit asal is a penyagaan delta Bam, there you go. Down on five minutes, finish. Okay, now, other how many questions? Wow. Okay, let's finish. Um, question three. Lah. Okay, let's finish question three then. We can all leave. Okay, last question. We can finish very quickly. Very simple. So, 3A. So, siapakah yang membuat bayaran? So, from here, who is the one that always pay? The pembeli. Right, the buyer. The buyer is always at the bottom, the bawah. And atas ini is always a seller. So, yang buat bayaran is this one. Buyer. So, it is SMK. Banda Utama Lima. But there's no such school. Ah. Okay. SMK Banda Utama is sampai empat saja, as far as I know. Alright, then B. Apakah bentuk bayaran yang diterima? Simple. So, where do we look at? We look at from here. Is, that, is it either tunai or 
check, right? So tonight already uh, cancel. So it will be check. Number check means this is search melalui. Check. Then C. Apakah jenis discount yang telah diberi? So what kind of discount is given? So whenever you see invoice number and then discount 100 ringgit beside here, this is extra discount. The extra discount means the discount yang got outside, yang bawa itu, the discount tonight. Right? Because the discount yang got is already in the invoice one. So the one, we don't have to change anything. Okay? is the additional discount that will appear here, the discount here. So this is actually a discount tonight. The last one. Apakah tujuan dokumen perniagaan tersebut dikeluarkan? Okay. Tujuan. Untuk apa? Untuk menjelaskan invoice. Or is there a better definisi? You know, sometimes I also not very good at this huh? theory stuff. You know what I mean? So where is invoice actually? Uh, Menjual urin niaga kredit telah. Uh, eh, this is Receipt Rasmi, right? Receipt Rasmi, Receipt Rasmi, Receipt Rasmi. It's not here. No, here. Uh, Menurut bayar telah diterima dengan amount yang sebenar. So you can actually say uh, untuk menunjukkan bayaran invoice Invoice, uh, buyer invoice telah di terima. Uh, so why do we need this uh, receipt resume? This receipt resume is always to buktikan, to show that the invoice telah dijelaskan. Okay, bayaran invoice telah diterima, or you can actually copy this one. Uh, invoice uh, telah dijelaskan. So that's all for uh, question three. And four and five, I think we'll come back in next class. So in the beginning of the class, I'll just discuss this with you all. And then uh, we'll move on to chapter four in next class. All right, so are you okay with this chapter three? If yes, give me a three in the chat box. Yeah, but of course, I have some homework for you all before you go. So you just quickly jot down the homework and then after you have jotted down, then you can leave. All right. So the homework, today's class, it might seem a lot, but it's not a lot actually. Okay. So but first, page 31, you do question two and question three. So this page 31 is actually your bab two, the persamaan pertonan. So there's one jadal persamaan Preconon that you have to do lah, right, to refresh your memory. So it's very important that always you keep doing and doing it so that it will be stored in your long-term memory instead of the short one. Because we are doing SPM, not for your uh what you call the Ujan, you know, semester satu or whatever. It's for long term. 12, 13. 14. And then page 45, you do question 19, 20, and 21. So although you can see that, you know, page 40 here, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, a lot of questions, but all this question is like this one. You see, you, you can actually finish in five minutes, five minutes, or even shorter because I'm talking. That's why it takes up five minutes. But if you're doing yourself three minutes, two minutes, you can finish one question. All right. So that's why for this chapter, a bit more questions, but it's not a lot. Actually, you can finish in 30 minutes if you are focused. All right. So these are the questions for today's class. And if you don't have any question for me, then you may leave and I will see you in the next class. All right. So see you guys. Take care. Bye. Um.